is ready. We'll go ahead and call the Ellis County Commission meeting to order. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Don, please note that my three, my two fellow commissioners and myself are still present. Mm -hmm. Any uh, changes to the order of business this evening, Bill? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, we would like to add one item, and that is for Mr. Jeff Younger to talk to us about our gas purchase contract. And if we could add that um, as item as 6A, that would be great. Anything else, ladies, to add? No. no. All right. Next thing I will ask for is a, there is no prior minutes this evening to approve. We'll move on for a motion to approve the consent agenda, items A through G. I move Mr. that we, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. No. Mr. Chairman, I. Argue. No, I we're going to argue about it. <clears throat> uh, I make a motion or move to approve the consent agenda items A through G and also the addition of 6A. I'll second. I have a motion and a second, Don. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries 3 0. We'll move on to issues from persons not on the order of business this evening. Monthly financial report uh, that was given to us before the meeting, ladies. Did you have a chance to look at our sales tax and everything? I, didn't I haven't had that. a chance to look at the sales tax. No, she didn't give us that. Yeah, she just handed them out. Oh, cool. I didn't get at one. Them I didn't one. That's, that's actually the PBC report. The monthly financials oh, were emailed to you by Bobby. Um, I didn't have any questions. Um, no, I don't have any questions on the financial report either. We'll move on to monthly departmental reports. It's a nice packet. Mm -hmm. Very thorough again. Yep. Do I have any questions with that? I don't have any questions. I did notice that it was kind of interesting. We had a lot of signs shot up this time again. I thought maybe we'd have sign problems with um, machinery, but not shot up signs. And I think I counted, what, 27, I, I believe, that had. There's quite a few. Yeah. And since Carrie is here, I was going to ask him, is that really high for hepatitis C? Doesn't that sound, it sounds like a. Hepatitis C, you said there, there were 11 cases last month. Is that, yeah. Yeah. Any idea why? Well, why not? On the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't hear. I know you're trying to get away from me, but. Um, it is a little high, but those have come through the EpiTrack system. So there's some investigations that need to go with those, and then we'll... You'll find out what's yeah, going on then. Yeah. Some of those may not even be in Ellis County. They may not be Ellis County residents, okay. but they may be living here, a student or something like that. So okay. we'll do a little investigations, and we'll get through them. Okay. Thank you. Move on to Mr. Jeff Younger. He's going to give us a report. Oh, those are mine. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I first of all want to thank Phil for kind of letting me slip in here tonight, uh, especially with you guys not having a meeting for, in essence, for three more weeks. So 
what I put together is just a quick overview similar to what I did when we were here back in November to look at our savings analysis on what we've saved with the properties uh, since October of 16. I've included, in essence, the months of October of 17 through May of 18. And with the gas that we had hedged starting in 18, uh, we've been able to save quite a bit of money. Uh, it's been a good thing. Uh, we currently have in place a hedge, in essence, through uh, the November through March timeframe of 1819. So for this upcoming winter, the, the hedge that we did back on the 5th of December for 357, uh, that's for 75%. So we're in good shape there. What I'm concerned with, uh, first of all, any questions on this savings analysis before we go to the next page? Uh, what that is, it's a savings analysis versus Midwest Energy's monthly rate. In essence, what they call their PGA, which is a purchase gas adjustment. Uh, what you see there on the right side are the actual prices on a per therm mm -hmm. basis. What you see on the left side, the cost of the commodity. This is what it cost you versus the utility. And that's where our savings of almost $11,000 has come in. Okay, so we've done a pretty good job on saving the county some money. So that, that's a good thing. Uh, what I'm concerned with right now, the gas market, we're currently close to three-year lows. And when I see three-year lows, I'm saying to myself, what's kind of causing that? We've got a lot of gas that's been coming on board. The problem that I see and, and probably what is going to happen is with more production coming on, we're finding more places for the natural gas, whether it's on the electric generation side where with the heat of the summer where we see a lot of gas being used on the air conditioning side instead of coal, okay? The other thing is uh, when, when we look at this, the LNG markets, uh, in essence, they're taking gas, putting it on a boat, turning it into a liquid down on the Gulf, and moving that gas to other places and doubling their money. If I'm a producer and I'm producing more, more uh, gas, I gotta find a home for it, and if I can double my money compared to what they're buying, you know, what you're buying it off the NYMEX, we gotta take advantage of that. Uh, on the second page that I gave to you, what that is, it's a, uh, how much gas we have in ground, in, in the ground for the upcoming winter. And there's two numbers I want you guys to look at and kind of circle. If we go about a quarter of the way down the page, you see the negative 24.8%, about a quarter of the way down where you see a year ago, mm -hmm. okay? That's how much gas we have less in the ground than we had a year ago. The five-year average, right there to the right of it, 19.1%. I'm, I'm concerned with this market at three-year lows, if we continue to see this, especially the five-year, not get up close in October and November to where we would be close to normal, if we get an early cold winter, are we going to see our overall prices increase? The 75% we have locked in for this upcoming winter is good. The good news is I can go out and lock in gas, in essence, for the November 19 through March of 20, as well as the November of 20 through March of 21 for around 320 compared to the 357 that we've got. In three weeks from today, can I guarantee that? No, it might be cheaper. But if we continue to see these numbers calculate like they have been, in essence, for the last six weeks, uh, my gut tells me we have more to the upside than we have to the downside. When we compare this 320 to not only the 357 that we have locked, but to what we've locked in in the past, this is probably the cheapest gas I've been able to lock in. You know, if we don't want to go out through 21, I would for sure look at doing something for the 1920 year at those kind of prices, you know. Okay. So the bottom line is, guys, we've saved some nice money. If we can lower our overall costs by locking in gas for as long as we can, it's only going to help the county more on those facilities, okay? Agreed. So that's my story in a real short overview of the market. Uh, you know, the energy market's changing as we speak. You know, there, there's a lot of things, a lot of things going on. A lot of pipelines being built. Marcy, you brought that up a little earlier. Uh, I have a customer up in Jim 
You wouldn't believe the amount of pipe that's sitting in that yard to run another gas line from, in essence, the same one they did four or five years ago. So uh, questions, concerns? So we could lock it in at 320 <clears throat> for two years? In essence, if we want to go out to the 1920, the no November through March, those are the months I want you guys to lock. And the reason, if you look at your savings analysis, the, the summertime, the April through October, you don't burn enough gas to worry about it. Uh -huh. It's those winter months because you guys are a heat load customer. You know, looking at the 1920 and even into the 2021, I get the same price for both years. That sounds great. I think it's a good idea. Do you need a motion or do you have a contract? Or <laughs> oh, no, what I'll do, if you guys make the motion like I have in the past, I'll go out in the morning and get it done. I, guess I just need to know the time frame. The discussion will be either we're going to knock it in through the end of 20 or the end of 21, basically. Yeah. That's the discussion. Through March of 21. We either can go through March of 21 or March of 20. We can either do one more year, extend it one more year from what we have, or go out as far as the November of 20 through March of 21 time frame. I guess I'm thinking we ought to go to the end of 21. I do too. At, at that price. At that price, yeah. I don't know what we're getting selling it out of the field and it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that would be my suggestion mine too I wonder if you what like percentage are you guys interested in are sure, you interested are making... in the 75, 75, or 75 I think yeah. that's what we've been doing correct Phil yes I think we need mm -hmm. to do 75 percent through the end of March of 21 whatever you like make think. it through secure is that what what how, who am I making the motion for in essence, to lock into gas no, for I, or the company. Secure energy. That's what, I'm that's sorry, what I was saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I believe how you handled this last time was you just um, Directed. approved it and authorized the county administrator to sign, sign the agreement. Okay. Jeff brings in. I move that we approve the county administrator to sign a contract with Secure Industries to lock in 75% of the gas rate mm -hmm. through the 2021 in the amount of three dollars and twenty three dollars and twenty cents uh -huh. we have a motion I'll second. second it I'll second that motion any, any other questions for their discussion uh. all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. motion carries three thank zero. you guys very much we appreciate the continued business we'll continue to do, you do our a good very job, best Jeff. for you yeah, thank, thank you. you Jeff thank you mr. Jeter tax foreclosure sale County Councilor Bill Jeter, uh, on July 5th of 2018, the Ellis County Treasurer provided to me a spreadsheet showing 20 properties that would be eligible for the tax foreclosure sale this year, which totals delinquent taxes, penalty, and interest of a little over $194,000. Recommendation is made by the Ellis County Treasurer and the County Councilor for the Board of County Commissioners to direct the uh, initiation of a tax foreclosure sale regarding those properties. There will be an initial small financial impact to the county in regards to paying for the preparation of certificates of title. There will also be some publication and service of process fees, but those will all be recovered back eventually from the redemption or sale of the subject matter <coughs> properties. I would therefore <coughs> recommend that the commission approve the resolution. And what's the resolution number, Donna? Is it? Mine just says 2018, but doesn't have a doesn't have a number on it. What's the next? You didn't get that. Oh, you didn't? Okay. I think you. Can I think stop. it's about seven or eight. It, we'll just number it whatever's the next yeah. one in the. But I I would ask the commission to approve that resolution, <coughs> directing me to go ahead and begin that process. I move that we authorize the county councilor to institute an action in district court of Ellis County regarding delinquent real estate taxes, including 20 properties with taxes, penalty, and interest in the amount of $194,116.28 plus costs. <coughs> second it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 He was an I. Yeah. <laughs> Three zero. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Yeah. <coughs> I wasn't paying attention what you said. All right. <coughs> uh, next is letter of support for the city of Hayes for the build grant. I wonder if that's a. 
If it says member on, on the resolution instead of commissioner, is that a problem no. at all? Okay, just wanted to make sure. The minutes will be clear on what resolution you're adopting, so. Bill, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chair, County Administrator Philip Smith Haynes. Uh, before you this evening is a letter of support for the city of Hayes. They are seeking funding to do improvements on the North Vine Street corridor. They're applying for federal U.S. Department of Transportation funding uh, from what is now known as the BUILD grant. Uh, it's a successor program to the TIGER grants that have been um, out there for a number of years. Those applications are due uh, this week, and uh, so the city has requested letters of support from various stakeholders around the community, uh, including the county. And I have prepared a letter for the chair's signature and be happy to answer any questions. Sounds like a good plan. I'd say uh, okay. We don't need a motion. Three thumbs up. I signed the letter. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, thank you. I guess the next item is why everybody, we have such a large crowd tonight, do you think? Mm -hmm. Presentation mm -hmm. of the revised Ellis County budget proposal for 2019, County Administrator Philip Smith Haynes. Thank you once again, Mr. Chair. Philip Smith Haynes, County Administrator. Uh, this is, as you said, presentation of a revised county budget proposal for next year. Um, as the commission is well aware, we are in the process, the tail end of the process of uh, preparing the budget, which will then be considered for formal action during the month of August in accordance with state law. Uh, a budget Proposal was prepared and submitted to the commission last Monday night, and at that time your commission asked that uh, staff return tonight with a further 1% reduction in general fund expenditures, including broad participation by all departments. So we have done that, and I have also detailed for the commission how those um, reductions were achieved in each department. There were three of the general fund departments that did not uh, see reductions. Those were the coroner, um, juvenile detention, and the sheriff's office. Uh, for the coroner and juvenile detention, those numbers are just sort of costs that we have to pay regardless of what's in the budget. So I felt like this would be um, kind of an artificial reduction if we were to try and take additional money out of there. Uh, the sheriff did offer a reduction. The reduction he offered would have resulted in the elimination of a uh, currently filled uh, employee position. And so I thought we were not quite there yet. Um, we might need to um, look at those kind of reductions in the future, but probably not to get this 1%. So um, made up that difference in the contingencies and transfers budget. Uh, that is what I have to present, and I'd be happy to answer questions that the commission has. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to yes. read something, <clears throat> and I'd like it to, I'll give you a copy of it to put in the minutes. Our 2019 budget proposes spending $2.4 million over expected income. Raising the mill levy will not fix this. It's a matter of spending more than we take in, and we need to learn to live within our means, and this overspending is unsustainable. Priority one is the Ellis County taxpayer. Many of them live from paycheck to paycheck and can't spend 100 when they only have $50. For the past few years, we've moved money from capital accounts and using it to pay for day-to-day -day operations, hoping that someday in the future, additional tax revenues would rebound or appear. Painfully, the reality is we as a county can no longer rob Peter to pay Paul. It's absolutely necessary that we get a control of spending in Ellis County now and not place this burden on future commissions. Each and every elected official and department head needs to change how they operate. 
Now, I know that department heads have started working on this, but it was also made abundantly clear that this is not a popular idea with elected officials or employees. We were elected by the, the taxpayers of Ellis County to make hard decisions when it comes to spending, and that's what we need to do now and in the future. We received a letter from the Ellis County Attorney, Tom Dries, which was addressed to our county administrator in which he claimed his department is $14,937 down from what he claims is necessary to adequately fund his department and implied the threat of a lawsuit with his declaration that Kansas law requires the county to adequately fund the county attorney. It appears that Mr. Dries believes the court should decide what constitutes adequate funds and not the Ellis County Commission, whose members have been elected by the taxpayers to make these very decisions. I believe this thinly veiled threat of legal action is uh, unappreciated, unwise, and in very poor taste, particularly with a requested budget of $924,787, which, by the way, has risen steadily each year with this budget of 2017 at 771,000. His budget has increased 8.5% over this period and let me point out that inflation has risen less than 2% over the last few years. Comparable counties such as Barton and Ford have larger staffs and significantly lower budgets for 2018 of 702 and 824,000 respectively. My vote on the 2019 budget will ultimately depend on what steps we take as a commission and, what, and our, how we are willing to take bring spending in line with our revenues. I look forward to the suggestions of my fellow commissioners. Thank you, Barb. Anything else? Yeah. That's it. Marcy, anything to add? I don't think so. I think that was very well written. Do you, I just was wondering if anyone else had any suggestions. Well, I appreciate everything you? that you put together as far as what you send us for the revised budget. Uh, I guess a few things I'd like to maybe bring up at this time also. I think going forward, uh, I know we all enjoy going to the KAC convention no matter where it's at. I think going forward from the commission standpoint of saving money, I think uh, the chair and vice chair is the only two that should go starting maybe in 19. And I think our department heads also should look at only sending two per department versus, uh, I know in the past we've sent m multiple ones, but I think going forward, uh, as you pointed out, it's $1,100 a person to go to that for three days. And I just think that's another area we can look at. And I also know that we can't bind future commissioners and come January, we may have two new commissioners, we may have one uh, new commissioner, we may not have, we all may still be sitting here, but uh, <laughs> hopefully we are, we got a nice group, I enjoy working with both of you. But uh, going forward <clears throat> also, uh, something I guess I think we need to bring up too, as far as cost cut cutting measures is uh, that we as a commissioner would take a 2% uh, pay cut also. Uh, we're not going to do it for 19 because we don't know the fate of neither one of you. And uh, there's no need to, uh, we can't bind a future commissioner if they come in. If we have two new ones or one new one, then uh, they may not be in favor of that. But I think uh, going forward, and Phil will still be here, I'd appreciate it if you bring that up in our next budget cycle for discussion. I know that seems like a ways away, but it's really not. But I just think that's something we also need to look at. Our department heads have done a great job out there. When we asked them for 1%, every one of them stepped up to the plate. Appreciate that. And even before the 1%, every one of you did a very good job. I appreciate everything that you all did. And uh, I just think going forward, uh, we also need to look at uh, our own salaries and also step up to the plate uh, if future commissioners are in favor of that. Barb, I appreciate the letter you wrote also. Uh, Pointed out lots of things. Do you have anything else to add? I think you said not, but I just want to ask again. Okay. No, I think it's fine. Okay. Yeah. I'm. Anything, we need to. Anything else? Flash. Suggestions as far as what you'd like to see cut changes going forward? No, I think they have done a very good job. Um, I was um, couldn't figure this out myself. 
<coughs> and I'm very proud of the fact that they did. Um, I look through these things and I don't know what they need to spend, but they know what they need and I think they did a very good job taking it out. I tell you again, I thank every one of the department heads and elected officials for what they did for the budget. And Phil, I know you did a lot this last week on short notice. I'm thinking I got a phone call at whatever time that was that one night, but uh, thank you for everything. Um, no, I think your thanks are very well placed with our department heads. I think department heads and elected officials have done a outstanding job. Appreciate all their assistance. And so, um, there's no other action by the commissioners we will go forth and publish this um, as our um, budget proposal and then have our formal public hearing on August 6th as a reminder publication just sets the upper limit not the lower <laughs> limit so um, there is still opportunity to further reduce expenditures if the Commission or members of the public have additional ideas but um, we will not be able to increase the budget once it's published. Good. Thank you. You both all in favor of that? Yes. Yes. Send it on. Thank you very much, Phil, for taking care of that also. We will move on to uh, County Councilor. County Councilor Bill Jeter, I don't have anything else this evening. Thank you. County Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chair, County Administrator Philip Smith Haynes. I do have a couple of items that I wanted to talk to the Commission about this evening. The first of which is the um, Northwest Business Corridor. I just wanted to update the Commission briefly on activities. We earlier, uh, the Commission agreed to sign a letter of support for the City of Hayes and their build grant application. We were looking at the possibility of whether we could also apply for build grant funds. Unfortunately, we just got started um, in the process way too late for that. Um, there are a number of required steps that um, are not going to get completed before Thursday, including a um, cost benefit analysis that needs to be professionally prepared. But um, I have been working with the Northwest Kansas Economic Innovation Center out of Norton, and they've agreed to uh, co some cost participation in the preparation of that study, so we will have that on the shelf the next time this grant comes around or if we're able to apply for another grant in the meantime. Uh, I've gotten uh, accident data from the sheriff's office. I have um, w met with um, uh, Mr. Dan Hess um, <coughs> about his interest <laughs> in the project. I've also <coughs> been uh, in contact with Fort Hayes about uh, right-of-way acquisition on 230th Avenue. So um, Mr. Ring and I are continuing to work full speed ahead uh, on the project and um, getting us prepared to be in line for grants as soon as possible. The second item that I wanted to just briefly update the Commission on is the elevator at the Law Enforcement Center. Um, it has been malfunctioning for a um, couple weeks now and um, I think the Commission knows that this was something that we had originally planned to uh, make some renovations to during the major courthouse remodel project. Those, it never quite worked the way it was designed. Uh, then we twice last year went out for uh, bids for a repair and both instances were unpleasantly surprised by the number that we received from the bidders. <coughs> Uh, we have now engaged a uh, consultant to try and craft us a better set of bid specs. Um, consultant said the numbers we got are probably <laughs> in line with the numbers we're going to get. Um, so in the meantime, the existing elevator has malfunctioned and um, uh, our staff, again, 
thank you to uh, particularly our buildings and grounds staff and our jail staff was in over the weekend both on Saturday and on Sunday um, trying to work with the elevator company to make repairs <coughs> unsuccessful at that but uh, the elevator company should be back tomorrow to attempt a further repair so we are doing all we can to get that thing back in service. Well, it, is it old enough to be on the historic registry where we could get some... Matter of fact, it is. It, it's so coming so can very we, close. Can we get some I believe it was installed in 1974, and so maybe, yeah. what, four or five more years it'll officially qualify. So It's probably just worn out, period. It is. It's, there was a lot of problems with it the whole time when we were doing the yeah. rebuilding. I mean, after so long a time, things just... Yep. Mm -hmm. Nothing else, Phil? Nope. No, sir. That's all I had this evening. <coughs> all right. Can you commission report? I have nothing. Nothing? I think I've said enough. I don't have anything. Nothing. I guess I don't have a whole lot either. Uh, Saturday, I got a chance to take our governor around the, the fair for a while, picked him up, and took him around for three hours and introduced him to the 4 H'ers and took pictures with the fair board and the 4 H kids and nice uh yes we'll all see everybody out at the fair won't we mm -hmm. so uh he had a good time he plans on coming back uh, october the 15th for the uh, fall nationals he's a dirt track racing fan so god bless him he had a good time and <laughs> got to make a couple laps on the track and talked to the drivers led the crowd in the pledge of allegiance and walked up and down the grandstands and as the saying goes, he shook hands and kissed babies and <laughs> I guess does mm -hmm. what he's supposed to do. <clears throat> but uh, no, he did thank, uh, thank Ellis County for everything that they're doing as far as the fair. He was uh, never had been uh, to the fair since he had recently, or not recently moved away, but since he had moved away, he had never been back to the fair. So he was excited Good to timing. see the Speedway. It was. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we wished him well in his election. and. He's uh, very excited for Hayes and things to come. We did talk about the, the road up north. That was brought up in 30-minute conversation, so we did talk about that. So Excellent. He was, he was glad he was able to send his people out here that day to go with all of us, Bill and everyone. So, so we did chat about that. and uh, I guess that's really all I had. Uh, I was kind of with Barb. I was a little shocked to get that letter, I guess, from our county attorney. But... Uh, we all have to cut, so it is what it is. But I was a little surprised when uh, we got a threat. But that's all I have this evening. If anyone else has anything else? No. Nope. No. If not, we will adjourn at 532. Thank you, Donna. Okay.